Hi, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Langless here. Um, and I'm here with another remote art video for today. And first, I just wanted to take a minute to welcome all of you that are new to remote art. A lot of people just recently went remote and are sort of learning the ropes of how this works. Um, so today, we're actually going to come back to the project that we've been working on over the last two videos. Um, and we're really going to be sort of fine tuning or revising our work. And I was thinking that this is also a good opportunity for those of you that are new to remote art to kind of catch up to where we are. Um, so here is an example of the artwork um, and what it might look like when it's finished. This is my example um, that I worked on. And really this artwork was an abstract artwork. And think about for a minute what abstract means. You might remember me talking about that during class. Abstract means that it's not really meant to look real or like anything representational. It's just about lines, shapes, and colors, and that's what's important about it. This one in particular really focused in on geometric shapes, shapes like circles, triangles, squares, rectangles, um, rhombuses, all of those shapes are considered geometric shapes versus our organic shapes that are more freeform or natural looking. So in this particular artwork, it kind of brought all of our shading practice that we did um, before this um, to a complete artwork. Again, if you have not finished this and send it to me yet, today, or I should say this week, that now is your time to really work on developing it um, so that you can get it finished. I know this um, artwork, when I was working on it, it definitely took more time than a lot of our other artworks that we've done. So wanted to give you a little extra time. So back to what I mentioned before. Today is really all about not only just finishing up your artwork, but really um, taking a moment to revise or fine tune your work. So a lot of times when I'm finished with an artwork, I need to take a break from it for a little while. Put it to the side, step back maybe, maybe even take a couple days away from it, and then come and look at it with fresh eyes. This way, you can see things that you might need to work on a little bit better than when you are you know, working on it for, let's say, 45 minutes, um, and you kind of just let's face it, want to get it finished toward the end, perhaps. So you might not see things that really need to be developed further. Being able to go in and revise your work or fine tune it is a really important skill to have as an artist. So today, one of the things that I would recommend is taking a look at your finished artwork and seeing if there are any areas where you can fix things or maybe develop them a little bit further. One of the things that's super helpful in this is a white colored pencil. So I grabbed one, I've got it all sharp, I'm ready to go. Another thing that's really helpful is an eraser. So here's the one, you can see I've used this pretty heavily there <laughs> on the edge. So this is a great eraser, you can use a big eraser or you really can use, um, even a pencil eraser will work. So if I look at my artwork here um, and take a moment, you know, there are several areas where I just don't feel like, you know, there are a couple that I really, really like, but then there are others that I'm like, okay, I think I can, you know, sort of make them even better. So what you can do in that case, um, what I love about white colored pencils, and this is just something I discovered recently, is that when you use them over the top of colors, they actually act as sort of a blending tool. So I wanna show you, for example, if you'll notice right here on the blues, see how there's all that white showing through? And it just doesn't really look like a smooth transition to me. So watch what happens. It's a very subtle change, but watch what happens when I take my white colored pencil and I go over the top. You guys see that? You know, the camera shakes a little bit when I color, so sorry about that. But if you notice, when I take that white colored pencil right over the top, it sort of makes this kind of haziness, but it gets rid of all those little white dots of the paper showing through. 
And I never had really realized how helpful a white colored pencil could be um, in creating this. So now that I've gone over it with that, look at how beautiful that is. I love how that looks. So now if I come down here to this section, let's see how it affects the colors. Holy cow, that one really changed. Did you guys see that? That's amazing to me. <laughs> So it's also kind of tinting the colors. So it's making, when you, when you have white mixed with a color, it's called a tint. Do you remember what it's called when you mix a color with black? It is called a shade. Makes it darker where mixing with our white makes it lighter. So now I'm just trying to kind of feather it in so it's not so dramatic, but I am really liking this a lot more than I did before. So I might come through to revise this and just touch up those areas where I really am not a huge fan. I'm kind of curious what it would look like in these neon colors because I, I don't love this transition right here. So I wonder if it would help out my neon colors if I did the white too. I'm not just going to try it. Yeah, wow. It almost looks like Sherbert there. Yeah, I'm really liking that actually. So for my artwork, what I might do to revise it is to actually go through and do this in any area where I feel like the transition, maybe there's a little bit too much white showing through um, just to change it. So as I was saying that, I'm noticing this red over here. Wow, look at that. So it goes from being white with a little bit of red over it and now it's mixing the colors to pink. And I really like that transition so much more. Love it. Okay, so continue to revise and sort of fine tune your colors. Um, and I also mentioned using an eraser. So um, you can see that I've used this one a lot. And what's great about colored pencils um, is that they, they won't erase completely, but they will erase a little bit so they can help you with your transitions. So for example, in here, I might just come around um, on some of my circles and just gradually erase to make it look a little bit better. Um, this one in particular is bothering me. So I'm probably gonna come back with my colored pencil and develop that a bit more as well. I'm almost curious about if I took this white colored pencil what would happen, but you do have to be careful. So this is one thing I'll point out. I'm looking for my sharpener here. Oh man, and I'm not finding it. So one of the things I wanted to point out um, is that if you have some color on there, so I don't know if you noticed that, if you have some color on there, it can mix colors where you don't want it. So unfortunately I can't, can't find my pencil sharpener right handy right now so instead of um, making you sit here and listen to me try to find that um, I'll just continue so make sure that you are checking your white colored pencil just so you don't get some color mixing because if I went to now work on this it's gonna actually mix that orange in and I won't be able to get it off so anyway white colored pencils and make sure you have a sharpener handy which Mrs. Langless did not so there's a good lesson for you. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. Anyway, um, so continuing to sort of fine tune and build up values if you feel like there's one. Like I had another, a lot of students who sent me work and they're like, well, I really like this circle that I did, but I don't love this one. So if you have some that are still like giving you an issue, go back to it. See if you can erase or further develop and make it look even better. Revising your work, it's so important. So for those of you who have not completed this project yet, I just wanna show you the, um, the steps really quick. And please go back and watch the other videos if you have not already. So we started by making at least three circles. Here's mine. I photocopied these. That's why through the magic of the photocopier, I can have several different stages um, saved to show you. So here are my um, spheres or my circles that I did first. And then we took a straight edge and um, broke up the background space, okay? Once you do that, that's when you start developing 
all those colors in the background. Um, and by the way, your circles could be colored too if that if you'd prefer that. That's totally up to you. So take today to finish up this project, okay, and develop those values. If you already finished this project and you sent it to me, take the time to go back and revise. And if you'd like, you can send me that updated photo of the um, work that you did to revise and I'll update your grade, okay? So um, when you finish, for those of you that are new to remote art or even those of you who um, have been here for a while but maybe haven't consistently sent me your artwork, please, 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 did I say please? When you're finished with your artwork, take a photo and upload it to Seesaw or to Unified Classroom, or just simply attach it to an email and send it to me. That way I can give you credit for your work. All right, hope you guys have fun um, with this project and also refining and um, fine tuning your artwork today if you've already finished. Good luck with it. And again, um, welcome to those of you who are new to remote art. Please remember everyone, if you have any questions, email me. Um, and I love to hear from you. All right. Take care, everyone. And I will see you next week with a new remote art video.